Hello and welcome to My Community, brought to you by the Library Television Network. I'm Fred Albert, host of My Community, and we're very pleased that you have joined us today. We're also pleased to have as our guest, Mr. David Mitchell, who is the Executive Director of the Peak Living Services here in Charleston. David was born and raised in a small farming community in Northern Ohio. Past work includes work in manufacturing, agriculture, horse racing, and the steel industry. He has been married to his wife. Uh, they got married shortly after college, and they have three adult children. The early career of David was where he worked as a case manager working with individuals with moderate to severe disabilities. He wanted to return to a nonprofit occupation after migrating family to the mid-Ohio Valley he explored vocational opportunities in West Virginia. During COVID, his family and he moved to, to be closer to their grown children, and he began his love and appreciation for the state of West Virginia. He was hired by Goodwill Industries of Canal Valley Incorporated in Charleston to open their new Prosperity Center in Parkersburg in November of 2020. He was then hired as the executive director of Peak Living Services, a subsidiary of Goodwill in Canal Valley. In May of 2023, with services starting at Twin Cities, Liberty Center, and Veterans Lifeway Center in June of 2023. He has completed his first year assisting the residential needs of unsheltered veterans, returning citizens from West Virginia state-run incarceration, and individuals with chronic mental and physical disabilities. David, welcome to my community. And you are a very, very busy man. So I appreciate you giving up a little bit of your valuable time to come be our guest on my community. Very privileged and honored to be here. Thank you very much. Well, let's talk about your past and, and we wanna, of course, talk about your present. But you've done some pretty amazing things in your life and you continue to do some amazing things, but let's talk about how you got started, where you, what you did in, in your past life. Okay, fantastic. Um, I graduated from uh, Otterbein College in Westerville, Ohio, and I got a business management uh, degree, and I thought business was my route. Okay. Uh, I started selling corrugated containers up in Youngstown, Ohio. Um, moved my family back closer to my wife and I's family, and that's when I got into the social service side, working okay. with individuals, and I love that. Um, it was a sheltered workshop, and I had about 60 people on my caseload. But about that time, after I was about six, seven years, my father got ill, mm -hmm. and um, I had about nine months to kind of learn his business before he passed, and his, his, uh, the business he had was manufacturing equipment that groomed the track at horse races. Oh, so I took that uh, over uh, with my cousin, um, and we did that for another seven years until we decided to get out of it. And so in this transition, I had the opportunity when we moved back down to say, what would I really want to do? Mm -hmm. And I had a passion and a love for nonprofits, and I, I remembered my days of how much I enjoyed working with individuals in need. And so as we moved, I applied for the position, and uh, I was very fortunate that Goodwill saw something in me, uh, and I was hired to open up the Prosperity Center in, in, in Parkersburg. Well, thank you for all you, that you do for our community uh, and, and for what you have brought to our community. Uh, I did not realize, I know that there's been a name change uh, mm -hmm. in the place where you're now executive director. It was called the Rourke Sullivan Center, I believe, or mm -hmm. Rourke Sullivan Living Center. It's now the Peak Living Services. Peak Living Services, correct. Okay, and there's a new branding. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that, why the change, or how that came about? Yeah, there was a, um, it happened, I think, maybe in December of uh, 2022, maybe, that okay. um, Goodwill was actually called in to assist in Work Sullivan and some of the direction they were headed. Mm -hmm. um, and there were a lot of great people at Work Sullivan, and a lot right. of people that really wanted things to proceed forward. But I think the evaluation was it was, it was not going to. Okay. And so what occurred was uh, Dan Owen, our CEO at Goodwill, uh, Canal Valley, he met with the city of Charleston and some other agencies. And what occurred is that Peak Living Services became a subsidiary of Goodwill 
and we took over the Liberty Center, the Veterans Lifeway Center, and Twin Cities in St. Albans. Okay. And then the Canal Valley Collective took over what was the Giltland Center, the emergency shelter. Uh, it's now the um, um, Equinox Men's Shelter. Okay. So, Rourke Sullivan was, was divided up. We took three entities and then the Canal Valley Collective took uh, the other. And so let's talk about those three centers or three mm -hmm. different entities. Mm -hmm. The Liberty Center you mentioned, where is that? And what, what does the Liberty, Liberty Center do? The Liberty Center is really a, uh, it's a fantastic part of our, our um, company. Okay. Um, it focuses on working with individuals coming out of state-run incarceration. I see. It is a two-house, four-bed um, location right on Shrewsbury. So okay. it's right there by the Capital Market. And Mark Harris is our program manager. He works with parole officers. And we have individuals, it's more of a transitional living house. So it's sort of what we would maybe have termed at one time a halfway house? Halfway maybe? house maybe, where okay. um, there is no... Or rent similar to Similar that. to that. Okay. There's the, the, the really positive thing about the Liberty Center is that when individuals come out, and right now it is just male, there's definitely a need for female um, locations like this too, but it's, a, it's male only. Um, they will come into the facility, they work with a probation officer, there will be employment involved, so individuals have this place to stay at no, no cost, and they can save money back. Okay. Um, so when their parole is over and they're ready to move forward, not only have they had the security and the shelter of the Liberty Center, but now they have financial opportunities when they leave. And right now, the success rate, I, I, last I saw, I think it was 98% oh, wow. uh, of coming out of the really Liberty good. Center. So it's an exciting part uh, working with the, um, the local um, prison system and the probation officers to get individuals kind of that step they need to get their lives back on track. Is there any type of counseling that's provided to those individuals during that transition period or I mean I guess all of the support systems are in place whatever that individual might need as That's far correct. As we can work with individuals and offer referrals okay. um, to what is needed. Uh, a large focus is getting them the residency they need and then also making sure there's the employment side of it. But we definitely look into any needs it would be, whether it be mental health or if there's uh, some maybe a substance abuse need, we can make referrals and work with individuals on that side of it. Wonderful. Okay, yeah. so that's the Liberty mm -hmm. Center. The next one was the, or is the? Uh, the Veterans Lifeway Center. Veterans Lifeway Center. Yes, and it is right um, on Leon Sullivan, um, right next to the Capitol Market. Okay. Um, and it is a 12-bed veterans, basically it's a transitional living shelter for, for homeless veterans or unsheltered veterans that are in need. Um, Bruce Purnell is our program manager there. And anyone coming in will do an intake with him and we determine what needs they have. And that also provides a transitional living to get someone up on their feet to permanent housing. Um, both with, with the Liberty Center and Veterans Lifeway Center, there is a, it's a year long um, mm -hmm. stay. So they have time to, to work through any issues they might have to maybe be able to save up money so when they're ready to leave they have um, some, some leverage or some opportunities they may not have if they didn't. So a 12 bed um, shelter for, uh, for uh, veterans. Are you, are you at capacity? Do you have a we, full house? We typically are at capacity. Okay. Um, the goal, and that's the great part about working with Goodwill of Canal Valley, is we can work with them um, on their vocational side of it. So we're working with individuals, getting them jobs, getting them ready for that next step. And so although it's available for them for a year, by no means do they have to stay there. Some individuals have been there six months and they've transitioned onto their own job and own place. What happens if that year has is expiring mm -hmm. and they don't have what they need. They don't have a job or they don't have, not all of their needs have been met. Right. What happens? Are they just? We've been fortunate that uh, that's not happened. We have a pretty okay. good team working and, and knowing that we have opportunities with Goodwill to find that job, uh, I'm not going to say that would never happen. I think what would happen is there would be an evaluation. There is also, with both locations, a follow-up process. It's not just when that good. year ends. There's a six-month uh, follow-up 
That's important. with individuals. That's so important. Um, our goal, and it's worked so far, is to make sure there's a timeline and to catch you know, these marks along the way. So sure. if we're in the six months, seven months, and we see someone maybe faltering a little bit, we could reevaluate and see, okay, wh what's going on here, why you're not right. where maybe you would like to be or where you could be. And, and 12 months, that's a pretty good period of time to try to get your life together and get, you know, the support that you need. And, and it's a good transition period. One year is, is really a pretty good period of time. It is. It's, I mean, I know it goes fast. It, it but goes fast, it, but individuals, um, whether you're coming out of the, you know, the penal system or you're coming through, um, you know, dealing with issues as a, a sh unsheltered veteran, that acclimation process sure. takes a little bit. So it's not like right on the day one that you're just jumping right into oh, it. It I'm takes sure. a little bit of time to get accustomed to what what the goal is and the plan. And, and I think that's what our staff uh, does such a great job with making them feel very comfortable like this is a home to you for now. Right. And then the goal obviously is to get a, a permanent home down the road. Well, how are uh, veterans referred to the Veterans Center? We, uh, obviously, we take walk-ins. Um, it's an open-door policy. They, they can walk in and do intakes. We also work with the Department of Veteran Affairs, uh, okay. which is right next door. Sure. There's a, an office there uh, out of Huntington. So we take referrals. Um, so although it's a 12-bed, you know, we do have a waiting list if needed. So if there's somebody that is wants to come in and we are full, we still go through that process so we can reach out to them because at any time, you know, there could be an opening. Right. Well, if you are full and someone comes in and, and there's a waiting list, mm -hmm. where what are, what's happening to them while they're on that waiting list? Yeah. Is someone trying to take care of them or someone trying to offer them shelter? What yeah. what happens? There? Well, that's kind of where there's different options <clears throat> around Charleston. I mean, there's the one thing okay. that I've noticed is there's a lot of compassion and care in the nonprofits here in Charleston. So you have and a so network. We have a network. And I know that uh, working with um, uh, the Canal Valley Collective, uh, there is that's the Men's Equinox Center. There are opportunities there if need be as maybe a temporary stop. Um, there's other locations, other nonprofits around that we can refer to. Um, but the, the goal is to just try to reach as many individuals that, are, that have served our country sure. um, to get them back on their feet. What are the challenges that you see for our veterans um, getting back into society? Is it mental health? Is it... It's, what, what are the greatest challenges? I think it's many things. I mean, okay. it's just, but yeah, mental health issues. There's, there could be substance abuse issues. There could be just lack of, you know, financial literacy, how to budget money. And mm -hmm. of course, all these things are addressed um, during the intake and with referrals. Um, it's also making that transition of having very limited structure to having some structure. Sure. Because as you go into... Um, the Veterans Lifeway Center, there is some structure to it, and that's that's helping an individual kind of prepare themselves for that next stage. So it's maybe that transition of of maybe some uncertainty, lack of confidence, um, to going into a program that's going to guide you mm -hmm. uh, in in a in a way that is beneficial, but it's still structure. Sure. So I think that's that's kind of the areas that I see in some challenges. But you're building success by having structure mm -hmm. and, and having those things in place. Do you have a staff? I mean, let, let's talk about the staff. I know you have a staff, mm -hmm. but I mean, do you have a, a staff with all of those that can supply all of those needs like mental health and, and, and physical health mm -hmm. and spiritual health? Do you have a... We, we do. We have... Um, we have what we call residential coordinators that okay. are on site all the time, 24 seven. Um, again, we have a referral network. We also have kind of a liaison with Goodwill um, of Canal Valley, Goodwill Industries of Canal Valley that works as a case manager. Okay. So that case manager will come in uh, and meet with Bruce and even some of the representatives from the, the VA next door mm -hmm. to kind of go over the whole plan. So. Okay. It, it's all encompassing. It's not just focused on residence or vocation. It is what is, what's happening in this individual's life right. that we can address and, and help when we can. That's important. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Um, how are you funded? 
Um, funding right now, we have been uh, applying for grants, obviously. Okay. Um, we do have grants that, that continue, continued on from Work Sullivan. We've applied for new grants. Uh, we have also been assisted in this initial stage uh, by Goodwill. Okay. Um, uh, it's, not, it's not inexpensive. No. Uh, process, uh, but the plan is and the goal is, and I think we're working our way there, is to be self-sufficient uh, at some point. But it's been a process really just getting acclimated to kind of a culture change yes. of what peak living services would like to be, um, and also getting our feet on the ground. Because anytime you start up a, n a new nonprofit, there are right. just steps you have to take. Um, getting funding and getting set to get funding. Sure. And that's kind of what we went through this past year. If people would want to make donations of like clothing or something mm -hmm. like that, is that acceptable that's or do acceptable. you just make those donations to Goodwill or how, how is that done? Um, there has been donations, there's been hygiene kits and there's been clothing that w have been received okay. um, at the Veterans Lifeway Center. Um, so those are always welcome. So um, someone could just stop by and say, "Here's if, here are some yeah, things I want to donate." As maybe far as maybe call ahead and talk to Bruce or one okay. of the staff to see if it's a large um, donation. But and I think like we're that. we're putting your website or uh, well, the phone number and the site for the um, I've got to get used to this name Peak Living Peak Services, Living Services. Uh, on the screen so mm -hmm. people could uh, use that phone number. Mm -hmm. Make a call and say, you know, I wanted, I would like to donate something. Yeah. Yeah. When would be the best time to drop it off? What are your needs? Mm -hmm. That type of Definitely. thing, I guess. Definitely, yeah. And we're, we're fortunate that we have two vehicles with Peak that we can assist um, any individual, whether it's, I mean, whether it's at Twin Cities or Liberty Center or uh, Veterans Lifeway Center to any appointment they may need. Um, that's a big step also. A lot of transportation oh, in West Virginia is, is across the board, I think, always an issue. Some people might not be able to, the KRT does a wonderful job with what they do, but outside of the bus, um, sometimes that's a limit to people, so sure. we're able to assist that way. Um, so do you have volunteers that come and volunteer to help, or is it pretty much a paid staff? It's pretty much would... a paid staff okay. uh, right now. Um, you know, part of that has to do with confidentiality sure, as far as we sure. want to be respectful to, you know, all our residents. Absolutely. Um, but we also work with uh, Mountaineer Food Bank. I wanted to, to throw that out there because they donate boxes, uh, food boxes that once a month we will take, um, allow veterans who are in need to come into our location, pick up a box. Uh, and we also use those vehicles to go out into the community to veterans who can't get to us. So we want to make sure that they and their families have enough food Oh, wonderful. Uh, to, to get by. And I know a young lady working with the Mountaineer Food Bank, so that, that's a yeah. great connection. So the third entity is Twin Cities. Twin Cities Supportive Housing. Okay. Yes. Um, and kind of the distinction between uh, the Veterans Lifeway Center and uh, Liberty Center and then Twin Cities would be this is supportive housing. This is individuals that uh, would probably be unsheltered, Okay. Um, due to maybe a mental or physical disability or difference, indifference that would cause them not to be able to maintain permanent housing by themselves. Okay. And so it's a 10-bed facility, male and female, and it's located in St. Albans. And it is more of a longer term. It's not transition. It's a longer term um, housing for individuals in need. And we mm -hmm. have a staff that will care for them um, on all aspects of their life. But it gives them shelter, gives them food, um, gives them assistance with their um, medical needs, and we uh, also work with Prestera um, in in getting them anything they would need as far as their referrals. So, how does someone get into that program? And you you said how many beds? Twelve there. Yeah, it, it's ten there. Ten. Um, ten there. Um, that basically it would be an intake. Um, there's different requirements for that, and and unfortunately. We wish we had more beds. Sure. This is one where we have, we don't really have a set time as far as how long someone will be there because they could be there long term. Okay. So the turnover there is not as high. I'm sure. Um, our, the plan would be for Peak Living Services as we get going, as we get funding to kind of expand our services, not, maybe, not only in Charleston, but maybe up in different cities like Parkersburg or down in Beckley. Uh, to open up these services, but right now we have, we're just the beds we have, and so there might not be as much movement on the Twin City supportive housing side as we would like as far as being able to help people, 
but we really focus on the quality of life that the, of the people that are there. So you have staff that's at those places. Mm -hmm. uh, cook, they cook the meals, or do people fix their own food? How do they, they, how do, they do that? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, Delcoria Fortune is our program manager, and uh, Dolores Thompson is her uh, chef extraordinaire. Okay. Uh, there they have uh, some wonderful meals that are provided. And I mean, not only do we, we purchase food for them, um, but we have you know people who have donated food, and so the the residents uh, are given three wonderful meals uh, Good. thanks to the staff there, and um, all locations are 24/7 staff, um, so there's around the clock care for everybody. What are the challenges of the Twin Cities that you see? Um, I think that the challenges of Twin Cities right now is maybe the diversity, I guess, of individuals and the, the issues they will naturally have as the older they get. Okay. Um, and wanting to reach out to make sure everyone's happy, uh, making sure everyone is safe. But I would say you're dealing with individuals that um, have more severe disabilities uh, mm -hmm. or, or needs. Okay. Um, physical and mental? Physical or? and mental. Okay. So um, it's just making sure that uh, everyone there is, you know, the, the, the staff is aware, the residents are aware, um, just more, you know, con constant contact. Mm -hmm. So the challenges would be uh, just keeping up with the natural changes in life. So if someone uh, is a resident mm -hmm. in Twin Cities and they have a medical need, mm -hmm. um, how, how is that handled? Do you transport them to the hospital or to a doctor or how, how are their medical needs met? Yeah, a anything that is severe, uh, okay. urgent. Um, okay. We contact obviously 911 sure. and we get right on that. Uh, but we do work with, like I said, with Prostera. We also work with local doctors. We okay. have transportation. So anything that is maybe non-emergency, mm -hmm. um, our staff will provide assistance either in referrals or transportation to get any need that they may have. It sounds like you have a full plate of <laughs> things so to take a good care of. Plate. A good full <laughs> plate. Yeah. Um, did you, stepping into this a year ago, did you realize what was ahead of you? <laughs> Did you know that you were going to be responsible for these living places? Um, I did in the sense that when it was the, the position of executive director was offered to me. Sure. Um, I knew it would be a new challenge, but my personality is I love challenges. Apparently um, you and, do. And I love working with individuals who are, who are in need because you can see that change daily. Mm -hmm. I have been just blessed to have such a wonderful staff, not only at Peak Living, but also with Goodwill of Canal Valley, Goodwill Industries of Canal Valley. They've been wonderful through this process. So did I know everything? No. No, I didn't. No one um, can know no, everything. No, I did not. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it was a great first year. We learned a lot. We've done a lot of successful things, and we just have a great future ahead um, for, for where we can help the, the Charleston community. Do you, I, I'm, I'm interested in how the name change came about. Did we address that? How, wh wh what is Peak? Where did that, do you know the history there? Um, we have, um, again, uh, Mr. Owen, Dan Owen, our CEO, okay. and the marketing uh, department, who is phenomenal as well, um, they realized that uh, there's a pattern, goodwill of Canal Valley, it's in the Mountain State. We had another uh, business, we had Apex. So there right. was this leaning towards something of a, a summit, a okay. mountain, okay. Uh, and that's where Peak came from. The peak uh, of the mountain. The peak, yeah, the peak living services. It, so. It's a nice logo. I really yeah. like your your yeah. badge on your yeah. shirt. I've seen the, or on your coat, I've seen the, the logo on the, on the building there. And that's what drew my interest. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, what's changed here? Because that was the Rourke Sullivan Center, now it's, called Peak, and, yeah. and I think that's very interesting. And I'm glad you, you brought that up because one of the changes we initially did was in all th well, on the two locations, uh, Veterans Lifeway Center and Twin Cities, we did total renovations. We, did, um, we, we made sure the kitchen and the doors were all ADA accessible. We repainted the walls. We got all new beds, mattresses, furniture. Good. Uh, we got new signage. We just redid everything. Um, which was which was needed, and it provides more a more homey look sure. uh, for the for the residents there. Well, and I think it shows more respect, 
perhaps yeah. too to to your residents. Yeah. Do do some of your residents end up working for Goodwill? Is that a they they actually do? They make? It's, obviously, it's not a requirement, but okay. um, if there's an interest by that individual um, and there's an opening at Goodwill, we definitely can set that up. But we've had we've had individuals not only at Liberty Center and Veterans Lifeway and Twin Cities actually. Um, go out into the community and get other jobs, but it is, it's open if they're interested. I've noticed a change in goodwill in the last um, maybe five or six years, maybe longer now. Time has a way of getting away from us, mm -hmm. but it seems like goodwill is more present mm -hmm. in our community. You know, I, I see the donation bins everywhere. Um, goodwill seems to be, there are more goodwill stores, mm -hmm. not just one location. Um, do you have any connection? I mean, do you have anything to do with that? Oh, I, did I wish I could say I did, but I don't. <laughs> you um, don't? No. Um, I, I think I mentioned previously that in my steel business days, I worked for Nucor Steel, and I always right. thought Nucor was kind of the pinnacle of the places that I had worked that just was top notch. And now um, Nucor's coming to West Virginia. It is. Yeah. Uh, it's a fabulous company, but um, I'd, ha I'd have to say, Mr. Owen and the executive team at this Goodwill by far makes Goodwill. This is the best place I've ever worked. And it's the vision, it's the compassion, it's the progress that I've seen, even I'm going on now three and a half, four years with the company. What they want to do and the changes they've made in the community are just unbelievable. Now, I don't have a point of reference what was before, but um, I just know that it's been uh, a great impact on the community. Well, I think anyone living here realizes that Goodwill is different now than it once mm -hmm. was. You know, it's like, oh, it, it, we had one location perhaps, or uh, you, you had to drive a, your um, donations to a particular place. Now you can donate almost anywhere. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's made it better for the community, I think. Um, I think there's a different image of goodwill too. They're they're more involved in the community than they once seemed to have been. I I could be wrong on that, but I just think they're more noticed. I would agree with that, and I think one of the the push of the executive team there is a lot of people think of goodwill as just the retail stores, right? But Fabulous goes, retail stores, and you donate. And what many don't realize is those the donations and the profit that come from that are given back into programs that are free to the community that really are changing lives, whether it's their um, you know, vocational pursuits and classes. Uh, but that's maybe what people are seeing as the, the ripple effect. I know that I'm seeing it. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, our time went so fast, David, <laughs> but I really appreciate you being here and I wanna thank you for the work that you're doing in our community and I uh, wish you continued success and we'll look forward to having you back as a guest in the future. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And thank you for joining us today on My Community. Uh, be sure and stay tuned for our next uh, guest, but have a great day.